what I'm going to talk now is a bit now the technology that we are introducing, the innovations, what is today, which is the innovation, and how this translates into customer okay benefits. And while uh, doing the session, I'll, to, I'll try to do some demos so you better understand which, which is exactly the innovation. Now, these are some of the claims no, that we are making. You have seen it before, uh, managers have talked about it. 53% less energy, 53% faster, smaller, and much more pages. Now, this is not just simply that we have done the product a bit better. Is that we have totally reinvented the laser jet technology inside. So my objective here in this presentation is that if you can go out the session understanding a bit how this has been possible, I'm good. Now, and with this, I'm, I'm presenting Jet Intelligence. Jet Intelligence is the new laser jet technology from HP that delivers three things. So if you can remember these three things, good. Pages, performance, and protection, okay? Now, beneath of each of these pillars, there are the innovations that we will cover today. But before starting, because I need a refresh on the laser jet process, how it works, I want to show this too. This is a, a cross section of that printer, of the M252. So um, I'll explain it a bit through the paper path. Here's where the paper is. These are the cartridges. And this is the transfer belt. I put it this way. So the paper is here. It gets grabbed by these two rollers here. Okay, It's going this way. Now, each of the cartridges puts the tunnel on this transfer belt. This rotates this way, and the paper is here, and the transfer belt is transferring the toner powder to the page. It goes up, and then it reaches this part. This is the fusing unit. And with pressure and heat, the toner melts into the page. It goes out, it stops here, and for duplex printing, it goes back this way, okay? The page goes back this way, and then the other side is printed. So many people think that actually the page has to follow all this. No, no, the page goes straight this way, and it's the transfer belt which is transferring the toner powder here. And then the fusing point is very important. And this I want to stop here because this is one of the experiments. Each toner has its concrete melting point. And I want to you now, which are the innovations? This was the basic law of, of laser. Jet Intelligence has these five innovations. Color sphere, pitch maximizer, and print gauge technology, anti-fraud, and auto seal. I'll cover, you know, and it will be high level, so nothing technical, something that everybody can understand. The first one, this is Color Sphere 3. So what we had in the past? In the past, and I here have the example of the gold balls, we had something like this. So there were no layers. No, there was uh, a unique composition of the toner particle. And what happened with this? That at the end of the cartridge life, as Andy was pointing in the presentation, the toner particles started to break. And at the end of the life of the cartridge, the last toner particles remaining were not useful for printing a page. So for build, when building a 20K cartridge, we had to put 25K pages on it because we knew that the 5,000 last pages were not acceptable for printing. I'm coming up okay, with big numbers just to make an idea what happened. Now we decided, okay, what is the problem? We need the toner not to beat up. So we decided, no, we created a hard shell and a soft core and this hard shell avoids the toner particles to beat up. And also, if you have a hard shell, you're also able to achieve a softer core. And I would say, imagine on this paintball of the shooting game, that you have a plastic hat, but inside it's liquid. So it would be a bit the same analogy. And here with the marbles and the M&Ms, it's very difficult to understand what was happening in the past. So this is, no, the current toner, and the toner particles rotate inside the toner hopper. And at the end of the cartridge life, because they 
you know, hit so much. Here at, at the end, you can see that there's this dust. So this would be toner that is not useful for printing. Now, the color sphere 3 with it. Car shell, no, it's simply as this were would be marble, they simply don't, don't break. And really you can take the most of the cartridge because you know that until the last particle is okay. Now, what about the soft core? So the soft core, as I said, if you're able to achieve hope this is now. You know what happens that when doing this experiment. With this, we try to replicate what happens inside the printer with a pan and a hot plate. So the hot plate is the fuser. This is the page, the blank page, and then I create two layers of yellow toner here. One is color sphere, and the other is from the aftermarket. I simulate a page, and then we melt it. And uh, it's to demonstrate how quickly fuses the color sphere 3 versus the other one. However, I need this to uh, cool down because if not, it doesn't work. And actually, I tried this experiment many times at home and it didn't work. Like, you know, this was cold, that was cold, I put it, and then I heat it and I say, why it's not working? And then the reason is that when the page goes inside the printer, the fuser is really hot and the page is cold. And it's the only way it works. That has to be very hot and this has to be cold. That's why I need this to cool down. <laughs> maybe so, I maybe do it at the end, okay? I'll wait for that. So this is the innovation on the toner formulation itself. Then page maximizer, very easy. What is page maximizer is, the toner cartridge, it's not only the toner and the toner hover, it's all the other components, drum, plates, developer roller, everything. So we have decided to make these components smaller and more robust. And in this sense, you allow a higher or a bigger toner hover. If you do them more robust, why? Why we have decided? Because there were some customers who were saying, look, HP, I know I print at low coverage, and I know that there's some toner remaining inside the cartridge. So I know that the drum or the developer roller has weared out, but I don't feel that I've taken the most of the cartridge. So we have decided to extend the life of all these components, okay, to allow more pages at a low coverage printing. And here, there's an animation actually of what we have done. You know, smaller, increase the toner, and they're more robust. This is what is the page maximizer technology. Then the print gauge technology. The gauges are what measures the toner level in the cartridge. And again, not only the toner level, but also the life of the drum and the developer. So, two innovations here. First one, it adapts to print behaviors. And second, more dependable tracking of cartridge life. This is directly related with uh, the hard shell. Because in the past, you got the low message, no, uh, yeah, low toner message, and actually, you not, were not sure of how many pages were you going to print with, because you didn't know the status of the toner inside. Now, with this new hard shell, as I told you before, as I know that until the last particle is perfect, I can track much more precisely how many remaining pages I have. So this has directly to do with the hard shell. And then adapts to print behaviors means that I use the analogy of driving a car. When I drive my car, the car, my car, it's not the same that when my wife drives the car. So the gas that we use is different. So the kilometers left are different also because I just simply go faster. Um, well, faster, yeah. Not, not better, eh? So that has nothing to do. Um, so the kilometers left are different. So same happens with, with, the, with printing. There are some customers or departments that print at one coverage and others print at a different coverage. So the remaining pages are different. Now, there's a complex algorithm behind, you know, that tells you, okay, this customer is printing today like this, he has printed before like that, and this, doing these calculations, the remaining pages that uh, this customer or this cartridge has, okay? So this means that it adapts. It, it sees how you are printing and it tells you based on that and also historically. This is the status information that you get. You now here you see this, uh, this table, the status. It would also tell you the pages that you've printed, the remaining pages and the percentage. But if you refill or remand the cartridge, you will not get the status information, okay? And this is because uh, for the customers, it's not fair. You know, we build our cartridges and our chips for our components. So if you're taking 
an HP cartridge you're replacing, putting some other parts. Our gauges are not prepared to work with components that are not HP. So we asked the ethical market that if you really want to show the remaining pages accurately to a customer, please come up with your own chip that measures your own components. Okay, so status information, print gauge will not be available if you're reusing a cartridge. And then the anti-fraud technology. Anti-fraud technology, three, pil three pillars, anti-counterfeit. Now, each time that you install a cartridge, it will tell you if it's genuine HP or if it's used or counterfeit. Now, how can it tell you if it's counterfeit? Because a message appears that if you bought this in an HP box, please be aware that this is counterfeit. And then you have there the link where to go to the anti-counterfeit team with an HP. That is, this is something that we didn't have before. You know, after market players simply reused the cartridge and it still said HP original. Cartridge anti-theft. This means that you can tie a cartridge to a printer or fleet. All these features are available through the panel menu of the printer, but also through WebJet Admin or a management tool. Now, uh, the anti-theft, it's quite intuitive because it's that you tie a cartridge to a printer or a fleet. And this avoids, you know, maybe some bad employees taking out the cartridge, you know, and taking it home. Some people told me, well, <coughs> it's then better to steal directly the box. No, and I said, well, be careful because sometimes if you have the cartridge, install it, and then claim an early end of life, then sometimes you can take back home, you know, 10,000 pages. This is for what the anti-theft <coughs> is meant. And then we have the genuine HP policy, that is that you can now <coughs> tell your printer or fleet to work with original HP only. These features, the anti-theft and genuine HP policy, are always off by default in any printer we ship. It's up to the customer to decide if they want to turn them on or not. Okay, just to be clear. And then, the last of the innovations is this auto seal removal. So in the past, we had to pull out this tab you know, and, uh, and install the cartridge. Now, this is no longer needed. I'll go here close to the printer. One second. So in the past, when you received the printer, you had to open the door, you know, take the cartridges, pull out the tab, install it again, you know, and then start to print. That is no longer that way. You simply receive the printer. The seal tab is inside the cartridge, and once you press on and it, turn, it starts to, to work, the tab becomes part of the printing mechanism of the cartridge. Actually, it goes inside the toner hopper and helps aerating the door inside. That's one, another of the reasons why you no longer have to shake the cartridge to take the most of it, because this plastic pad that is inside is helping to ideate the, okay, the toner. So no more pulls here. So less waste, easier, and faster. And now this is cold enough. I'll do the demo. Did you burn your hand out there? For HP, whatever. I did a joke before, but nobody laughed. I will do it again. <laughs> I always said when I travel with this, but this is true, no? Because sometimes I have to travel in the plane, and now I create like two layers. I give thanks God that the powder is not white, you know, because some people, somebody once told me, like, what, are, what are you traveling, or what are you, what are you doing with this? So at least it's yellow. So again, um, I'll pay two layers. Yeah, nobody laughed again. <laughs> I'm very bad at jokes. And I'll put here the two layers. So again, one is color screen three and the other it's normal so this is one and actually you, you can touch them and I'll pass with them around if you start to shake them so toner is powder but it behaves as a liquid no so the one that flows more as a liquid it's the better one okay so I'll do the same here I don't know if you've been able to notice also because of the light but then if not you can touch it you can play with them and 
I will not tell you now. Let's see which one is before. Now I create the page. This is the way how I create the page. Sorry. Okay, this experiment is very nice. No, but what this means in terms of the printer. It would be that the fusing uh, unit, it's, it's working at a certain temperature and it, it knows which temperature because it's the temperature at which the toner melts. Now, if it doesn't have that melting temperature and it has a higher one, you get the page out, you're not able to notice, but all the toner has not melted and it remains in, in as powder and this gets into the air. So it's very important that the toner has the melting temperature of the fuser unit. So all our new printers from now, you know, we will be introduced will come with the jet intelligence technology. Also remember now I I went and, and until this experiment to turn out. Remember three things, just easy to remember pages, performance and protection. And the, this thing of the uh, tunnel is really, uh, I know that it's more technical now, but it's really a huge innovation. The thing of having you know, a different composition on the hard to allow hard shell and a softer core, it's something, from a chemical perspective, it's amazing. From a toner perspective, this is probably the most significant um, change in toner technology since we introduced the original color sphere 10 years ago. Actually, this combined with the jet intelligence is probably the most significant uh, advancement in the technology overall since we introduced the, the laser jet 1984 combination of all five of these features. So it, it took a while again because for the experiment to be perfect, it has to be very cold, but more or less you can see what it starts to happen. This one was the Color Sphere 3, you know, it's melting. Actually, there was, you know, a bigger layer, but anyway, it's melting. And this one, I tell you because I've done it before, it will remain there and it will even start to change slightly the color and become green. So we could leave it here, but here you can see how important really is to have the exact melting temperature of the, in the, in the tunnel for the fusion unit. And for this, we thought I'll be here. If you have any question uh, for me or, or to Andy directly about each of the innovations or whatever. And thank you for attending.